In this video, I've got five classic gin cocktails for you. Right, I say classic gin cocktails. I'm gonna do what I do best in this video, and that is giving you inspiration. So I'm gonna take these classic cocktails, I'm gonna slightly flip them up for you with uh, kind of a little, little different ingredients just to kind of make modernize them and make them more fun, because that's what I love doing. So uh, the first one I'm gonna do for you is the bramble. Um, now with the gin, uh, it doesn't really matter. All I'm going to say is a London dry gin. I've got three um, London dries. I've got two actually on the back of my bar. So I'm just going to flip between them. There's no right or wrong. And uh, the first one I'm going to start off with though is Bullard. Uh, now the brand will say is that very simple sort of gin, lemon, sugar, blackberry liqueur. But I'm going to do a little twist for you. And this is going to be an elderflower bramble. All right. So uh, first ingredient here. Very, very simple this one. Very, very simple. 50 ml double bubble of decent London dry gin. Bullard's is probably my local biggish one, if you like, from Norwich. Uh, so I've got 50 ml of that. Uh, freshly squeezed lemon juice, 25 ml of lemon juice. Now, the, um, the elderflower part, I'm gonna substitute plain sugar that would normally go into the recipe. I'm gonna substitute with elderflower sugar. You could use, uh, this is just the syrups that I use because this long life is shelf stable. Unlike the other two brands that we have in the UK, Bottle Green and Beaver, Belvoir, however you wanna say that, which will kinda need to be refrigerated and used within three, four weeks after opening. These will just keep on the shelf, they're fine. And it's really vibrant in the elderflower as well. So, right, so I'm replacing the plain sugar with elderflower and 15 mil, one five. All right. Now, traditionally, we would shake it and then drizzle the um, the blackberry, the creme de mure, on top. Uh, now, that would be the go-to. But as I say, I'm just going to modernise it. Blackberry for you guys, especially in the UK, uh, it's kind of hard to get hold of unless you order it online. So we're not going to use blackberry. Instead, I'm going to use Chambord, which is a black raspberry liqueur, pretty much available all over the world, French liqueur, uh, and I'm just going to use 15 ml, and I'm going to pour it straight in, and it's going to get shaken up in the cocktail. All right, so I'm just modernizing the bramble a little bit, making it easier for you guys at home just to have a bit more fun. So, icing this up. There we go. And then shake her, give it some proper welly, hard fast shake, 10, 12 seconds. There we go. Right, uh, I traditionally get served in a rock glass, rocks glass, and this is a rocks glass, you know, it's kind of like a tumbler like that. Virtually similar sizes actually, but I just, it looks a bit taller, so I'm just gonna use that. I'm gonna serve it up with crushed ice. Strain that all in. There we go. Top it up with crushed ice. Now these cocktails are all about the ratios as well, so don't worry that there's nothing, not much in there because that makes the cocktail. So top it up with crushed ice. There we go. And then, as always, traditional garnish. Look at that joker of a barman. Look at him. <laughs> there we go. And I've just got. A Blackberry on top. Mm. Oh, that's quite nice as well. Let's have let's add a bit of juice in there. A bit of blackberry juice. Perfect. There we go. And that is the bramble. Elder oh, elderflower and and oh elderflower and raspberry bramble. That, oh, that's proper tasty, that is. So that's your first cocktail. So the second cocktail I'm gonna do for you now is uh, actually a Collins, a flip on a Collins. Now, I did lie a minute ago because I said all oh, London Dry. I completely forget I've got an old Tom Gin behind this. So I'm gonna use an old Tom Gin in the Tom Collins because that's technically what it should be. However, to flip this up, to bring it to modern day life, I've got two flips of ingredients in the Collins. This is gonna be a peach uh, Collins with a little subtle lemon twist in there as well. So the glass I'm gonna serve it up in, Lovely sort of stemmed highball glass. That's all that is really. Uh, again, this is going to get made in a cocktail shaker. 50 ml double bubble. And this, this to old Tom Gin, again, you could use London Dry. It's absolutely not a problem. Most bars up and down the country would use a London Dry Gin in a Tom Collins. However, old Tom Gin is the proper gin that goes in this. This one from Bullard's, 
just sort of lovely, subtle mango notes and a bit of honey in there. It's just absolutely delicious. Forgot all about it. Right. Sorry, Balot. 50 mil, double bubble. How could I not use an old Tom Gin when I've got one on the back of the bar? So, 50 mil, double bubble of old Tom Gin. Now, uh, peach. Uh, I've got some peach puree here. You could muddle down fresh ripe peaches depending where you are in the world. Um, peach puree is easy to get hold of though. I think you can even get peach coolie in um, supermarkets in the UK. But this is lovely. Uh, these purees are really vibrant, long life, shelf stable. I uh, just want 15, one five mil. Okay, I don't need much more than this. Other brands, Funkin for instance, you might need 25 mil. Uh, but then just balance it out with a little bit of sugar um whereas this i'm going to add a touch of sugar but i'm not actually going to add as much as i would do if i was using funkin for instance because this is sugar based as well so 15 ml of peach puree in there then i'm going to freshly squeeze lemon juice again it's very similar to the bramble 25 ml of lemon juice uh, i'm going 10 ml of sugar and i'm going to sneeze in a second it's going to be fun on video. <laughs> 10 ml of just plain sugar. There we go. Right. Now, that's essentially the Collins part. So a Collins is just essentially gin, uh, lemon juice, sugar, and soda. So I've added a bit of peach to that, and there's a final flip in the ingredients when I serve it up. So ice this down. And I'm not really asking for your name suggestions in this one because it kind of are, but you, you can, feel free, feel free you regular guys uh, to rename some of these co these cocktails. I've just really called that an elderflower uh, and raspberry bramble. This was, I was just calling a peach collins to be fair, but if you wanna name them, stick your suggestions below. Right, there we go. Right, now, Ooh. oh, more peach puree, didn't get that all that. Lovely jubbly. Right, the soda that I'm gonna use in this is actually not a soda. It actually is a lemon tonic. Again, no right or wrong with the brand. I, it's just a brand that I use, Franklin's and Sons. I just think they're, for me, my own personal palette, I just think they smash it. Um, Fever Trees, since the refreshingly light stuff come out, I'm not a huge fan. I like, like it with a touch more sweetness, but could even use like San Pellegrino, Limonata or something like that, lemon soda if you wanted to. I just like this, I'm gonna use this. So 50 ml, double bubble. I'm just gonna get the rest of that peach puree out. There we go, 25, 50. As I say, in all my videos, I just pour it into the mixer to stay stirring it or to save that sort of watery layer on top. So that will all be blended in. Right, strain that into there. Lovely. Then just gonna ice this up. Top it with a bit of crushed ice on top. Now garnish for this. If you've got some fresh peaches, obviously, obviously that's gonna be the go-to garnish for that. Uh, I've just gone for a little bit of color contrast though. I'm just going for a strawberry. Because strawberry and peach is quite nice. And you know what, even a bit more of a subtle uh, color contrast. Uh, let's get a decent mint sprig. Where's one, there we go. Decent mint sprig. And that's kind of a peach and lemon Collins, if you like. What's this? Oh, oh that is, that's amazing. Mm. That is, that is so good, so good. Right, point of the video now, I've just literally washed up. I'm good at this editing like and you never notice the difference apart from those. Part of the video, well, I'd just like to give a big, massive shout out to all my Patreons. My Patrons? Patreons. You legends, they're all part of my Legends Clubs. Your names will be uh, rolling along the bottom of this video. Thank you so much for your love and support. Uh, please go and check out my Patreon community. 
my little membership club. Uh, I love to give back. I love teaching. I love educating. Uh, so every month you get my updated cocktail book. You can always download the free version off every single video. You'll see the links in my uh, in the description and in the comments as well. Download my freebie. But the updated version it gets, is rolled out every single month. Is part of the perkin of my Patreon. You get uh, weekly simple serve suggestions around your favourite spirits. Lots of educational content. So go and check it out. I'm there to try and help you guys have more fun with your drinks. Right then, the third cocktail we're going to tackle is um, the French 75. Traditionally, kind of cognac, but actually, uh, modern day times, more um, gin. And I, I've always associated it with the gin-based cocktail. Now, uh, I'm actually toying, I'm still toying with which glass to actually use for that because I don't I don't like flute glasses. I don't like big tall ones, but I've got I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use that. You could use a coupe glass if you want to, but I think I'm just gonna adapt the ratios very slightly and I'm gonna use a smaller champagne flute uh, for this. So we are going in a cocktail shaker. Now the flip I'm gonna do for this one is kind of a gin and rose uh, French 75. I really love the rose with this. So uh, instead of a double bubble, actually, let's swap gins now. Let's swap brands. Let's go long table uh, for my Canadian uh, fan base. Thank you very much. Uh, so long table is uh, basically a Canadian London dry gin. Lovely jubbly. I'm going, now normally I would do 50 mil, but for the size of glass, I'm going 35 mil. And I've used the wrong end. So 25. <laughs> there we go. And 10. I always do that. Uh, so it's 35 mil of gin in there. Uh, now I'm going for some rose. It's my rose um, liqueur. I think it's available kind of in the quite a, a long way around the world. I think it's getting out there. So it's basically a rose, I think liquid Turkish delight uh, liqueur. It's quite strong, 39%. But if you've got whatever rose you've got, uh, I just think works an absolute treat here. So that again, 15 mil of rose. One, five. I just love this. Literally liquid Turkish delight. Perfect. Right. Uh, now just uh, sugar and lemon juice. Let's go lemon juice first. Uh, 15 mil, size that glass, one five. And then I'm going to get 10 mil of sugar syrup. Maybe, maybe just under 10 mil, seven and a half. But no me, it'll probably be 10. Oh, 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 there we go. Look at that. Seven and a half mil of sugar. Again, bigger glass, I would have gone 10, maybe 15 mil of sugar. Right, so that's that's that part. Obviously, we're gonna ice this up now. And we're gonna give it some welly. Proper shaky, shaky. Right. There we go. Now, normally, you would kind of See, I'm conflicted about this. Normally, I would strain that in there and I'd pour the Prosecco, the champagne, on top. But I kind of preach against that when I'm doing those sort of cocktails. So, I'm conflicted. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it properly. Do it properly. So, uh, I'm going to single, uh, double strain. Don't want any tiny little shards of ice in there. There we go. See, perfect for the size of the glass. If you've got a bigger champagne flute, just use more gin, slightly more lemon, just, just up it, up the gin to double bubble, and then the lemon juice to 25 mil, sugar to 10, 15 mil. Perfect, right. Then just topping up with my, again, as I said, many of my videos, I'm not a huge wine drinker, so I've only got little bottles of uh, Prosecco here. It's just easy. So I'm just going to top that up. It is fizzy. <laughs> it's um, more frizzante levels at the moment, but that'll work, that'll do. And then just to garnish this, I'm going for a little raspberry, little raspberry kebab. If I stay on there. Yeah, that'll stay on there. Oh, let's have a little sip. Mm. Oh. I tell you, if you can find a rose flavoured gin, I'm not sure what exists actually. But if you've got a rose flavoured gin, that'd be lovely. But that's just elegant. You could even flip out the 
um, the sugar for elderflower in that, like I did the bramble, elderflower and rose, that'd be lovely. Mm. Oh, that's good, that is good. Right then, now we are coming to the gin fizz. Cocktail number four. It's a highball glass. I think that's the smallest highball I've got. I'll use that, that'll be fine. Uh, now I'm gonna, instead of a plain gin fizz, I'm gonna do a pear gin fizz for you. All right, so uh, again, gin cocktails, especially sort of long good cocktails like this, they're virtually identical the way they're made, gin, lemon, sugar, and then regardless of whatever. So gin, let's go, let's stick with long table for this one. Okay, back to Ballard's for the last one. Pop, uh, 50 ml double bubble of gin. In there, decent London dry. Right, now for my pear elements. Now I have got, I'm hiding it, I'm standing behind it. I have got absolute pears. You could use that like a pear vodka. You could even do this as a pear vodka cocktail and not gin based, but I have got, it's a bit old and I need to use it. Hence the label's uh, a little bit worse for wear. Uh, just a decent uh, Giffard, Giffard, whatever you want to call it, pear liqueur. I really do love this. I don't use it as much as I should do. I've got also got um, Caribbean pineapple up there and apple of Giffards. I really do like them. They're, they're really good. And actually, uh, what else? I've got a vanilla somewhere. Anyway, uh, off track. 15 mil of pear. Oh, I love pears. Pears. Pears like my favourite fruit. It is. Love it. Right. Could even use... Uh, I've actually got... I never thought I've actually got some pear purees here as well somewhere. There we go. I could have used... Could have used some pear puree, but I'm, I'm going to keep it classic. Right, so, uh, gin, um, pear, lemon juice, 50, um, 25 ml. 25 ml. And then sugar. Now, there is there is a bit more to this cocktail. There is a little bit more coming up. Now, the gin fizz, uh, 10, let's go 15. 15 ml sugar syrup. Yeah, right. Um, now, as I say, a bit more to this. The gin fizz is all about the froth, the foam, and the length of drink is finished off with soda. So, uh, now, obviously, as the regular ones amongst you will realize, uh, I don't use egg whites. I use my foamers. Um, so this is uh, essentially liquid egg, egg white. It's, uh, it's not, it's, um, it's bitters, essentially, but it's the equivalent of 160 uh, egg whites in there. It's long life, shelf stable, vegan friendly, more importantly, um, because I can't use egg whites. And a lot of people don't want egg whites in their cocktails. They don't realize how much egg white is actually used in quite a few cocktails. So um, this product's been around now for a few years. Oh, it's a godsend. Absolutely works a treat. You just need about a quarter of a pipette. It will not alter the taste. Uh, it will if you use too much of it, but a quarter of a pipette is absolutely fine. You don't need to. Now, I'm going to do this properly, pretending you have got egg white in there. Again, you don't need to dry shake this, but I'm going to. I'm going to pretend that's egg white and we're going to dry shake it. What that will do if you've used egg white is emulsify it, put the froth on, all right? So, about five or six seconds. There you go. And you can see that that is all properly frothed up, all right? So now, we need our ice to chill it down. we go and now we're going to shake it properly 10 12 seconds giving it some welly right here we go proper fizz proper froth this one proper froth now just to finish it off i'm not going to flip the soda up at all i'm just going to let the pear do the magic in here uh, i just want 50 ml of soda water So we've just got a pear, pear gin fizz. Right. Now, just need to single strain this. Look at all that frothage. Perfect, and then just top it up with ice. And then just crown it with a bit of crushed ice. Get rid of that one, there we go. Bit of crushed ice, and then garnish for this one. I've got one, I haven't prepped it. Oh, there it is. 
I'm gonna, I'm actually got some pear. I'm gonna do a little, little bit of pear. Do two. You could do a pear wheel. Let's do a pear wheel. You could do a pear wheel like that. You could stick, you could do a little pear fan if you wanted to. Kind of like that. You know, another, let's do, let's see if we could do a pear fan. There we go. Do a little pear, little pear fan like that if you wanted to. Whatever floats your boat. Even a lime wheel if you don't want pears, but this is just. Mm. Oh. So the pear. Right, the fifth cocktail we're gonna do for you. I've done the bramble, brought that up to date. Uh, I've done a peach Collins, uh, French 75, and a gin fizz. I think the final cocktail, there's so many classic gin cocktails that I could do, even the martinis. Oh, martinis would be boring, aren't they? Um, he says, getting a martini glass out or a coupe glass. Uh, the final cocktail I'm going to do for you is the Pink Lady. All right. So, um, again, as I said, going back to uh, Ballard's for this one. Uh, and I want 50 ml okay, of a decent London dry gin. There we go. Five zero. Uh, now I just need my, again, my lemon and my sugar. So 25 ml of uh, lemon juice. Then I want 10 mil of, or 15 mil, whatever you fancy. Uh, let's go 15 mil, let's, let's go 15. Of sugar syrup. There we go. Right, two more ingredients. One's gonna be a bit crazy. <laughs> Which way should we go first? Let's turn it pink first. So. If I can find it, there it is, right in front of me, I moved it. Want some grenadine, this is where the pink comes from. You don't need much, just literally five mil of grenadine. It was very accurate there. That was a proper five mil. Right, and then the final ingredient to flip this up. Apple, I have got uh, I've just used the other one, as I mentioned. I have got a Giffard or Giffard um, apple, sour apple liqueur that I could have used. However, I have been rocking out Jack Daniel's apple uh, for a while. Oh, I just think, let's go whiskey, gin, why not? That works. Uh, so I just need 15 mil of a Jack Daniel's apple. It's obviously not huge bourbon notes in there, but you do get a lovely uh, apple sort of notes coming through. And I just think that works a treat. So we've kind of got a pink lady uh, kind of apple sort of notes on it as well. So, uh, gonna shake this down. Again, could have chilled your glass down completely, forgot. My ice is getting to the bare. Got lots, lots of random bits of ice in here today. It's like really terrible. Look at this. Like crushed, yeah, powdered ice. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, you don't want to know about that, do you? Uh, hard and fast shake. False start, barman. False start. The pink lady does come with egg white in it. So we do need our miraculous foamers again. And again, I just need about a quarter of a pipette. You could have dry shaken it, but I'm just gonna prove that you don't need to. I did it intentionally. I false started intentionally to prove that you don't need to dry shake those foamers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> styled it out, didn't I? Styled it out. Right, hard fast shake. There we go, look, see, look, you don't need to dry shake them. Right. Now, uh, double strain this, he says. Hold that thought. It's like I was never gone. <laughs> it's clean, it's washed. Right, double strain. And then the garnish for this one. The garnish for this, because I like using it. It's really cool. I've got some more. I'm always going to keep a supply of this. 
and you new people that haven't watched this far will be thinking, what's he talking about? I have got, let's see if the close up can get it. Let's get the angle. I have got some blitzed up dried raspberry in there. All that is is just freeze dried raspberry blitzed up. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on top. Yeah, perfect. And that is my pink lady. Mm. With an apple, oh wow. With an apple twist. Cool, you do not get the bourbon notes at all. But you certainly get the apple notes. Mm. Oh, this is gonna be so tough. Right, what order do I do me? Uh, four, three, two, one. Right, tough call, which is gonna be the best. Let's go back to this one. Oh, I do love that. Mm. I think that's gonna be my favorite. Right, this is easy. This is absolutely easy. I'm not a huge uh, Prosecco fan. So the French 75 will always be last in my books. However, that is tasty. The rose notes coming through there. Um, in fourth place, I'm going that. Purely because I've got a little, I like fun drinks. That is a classic stunner, the pear coming through. Really big fan of that. But I just love my big, bold, vibrant flavors. Perhaps if I'd used pear puree in that, then that would have come up a notch. But I am going like that. This is amazing. Mm. 